Good evening, everybody, and welcome to uh, the second week of Bittens Made For More. My name's Simon Jones. I'm one of the skippers on Bittens Afloat. And if it's your first time with us, then let me tell you what we're going to be doing. We're working our way through a book called uh, 16 and a Half Ways to Upgrade Your Faith. You don't need to read that book, but if you want to buy it and read it, then you can do. And last week we looked at a chapter all about the Holy Spirit and we were set the challenge to invite the Holy Spirit to come into our lives and to fill us every single day of the week. This evening, there's going to be another challenge that we're going to we're going to have and we're going to discuss that in our our cabin clubs later. But before we go on, I'm going to hand you over to Sophie. Sophie has been thinking about asking the Holy Spirit to fill her every day. And she's going to tell us a little bit about that now. Good evening and welcome to this evening's uh, video journal. Uh, we are reflecting on the past week about asking the Holy Spirit to join us uh, each morning. Um, I found this topic quite hard, I'm not going to lie. Um, I come from a church background where the Holy Spirit wasn't really ever spoken about, ever discussed. I didn't learn about it. Um, so it's been quite a new and recent thing for me. Um, some of you might know that I'm at Bible College, uh, so I'm studying theology. And I have incredibly been able to avoid to avoid answering any essay questions around the Holy Spirit. It's a topic that bamboozles me. And so therefore I haven't written any essays on it. And that might be a bad thing because I've kind of shied away from it. But this week I've really been praying for the Holy Spirit to fill me every day. And the way that I've seen it happen is through conversations with people. I really love a good fruitful conversation with someone. It's been hard recently being in lockdown and not meeting new people and not um, not having conversations or coffee times with people. Um, but we have got some housemates who actually work on a mission team um, for bringing the Holy Spirit into churches and into people's lives, teaching on it, preaching on it um, and praying over churches and praying over people about how the Holy Spirit can fill them. And... We've had some really fruitful conversations with them this week about that topic and about how I shy away from the Holy Spirit because it scares me um, and all of that. And um, myself and my partner have kind of chosen that we really want to be a part of this mission opportunity um, because we think it's really great. We love what the Holy Spirit does. Like we've seen it work at um, Soul Survivor and... Um, we've seen it work at the college and in the college life and it can just do amazing things. And I think it's so easy to not be expectant of the Holy Spirit. I think one of the things I really struggled with in my home church life is the fact that everything was so ordered. The liturgy was so ordered and I never walked into that church and expected to receive the Holy Spirit or be present in his presence and one of the things that this week has really taught me and one of the things our housemates have really taught me is about the fact that if you don't leave room for the Holy Spirit to work in your life you won't see it and so I've taken time out each morning to ask the Holy Spirit to fill me but not just that because I know he lives in like he is constantly in me, but I've asked for the Holy Spirit to to make itself aware to me and see wh where it is and where it's moving. And at the moment it is moving in those conversations with our housemates, which is teaching me so much about the power that it holds and how we can get more people to experience the power of it. So that's what's been happening in my week. Um, about on the topic of asking the Holy Spirit to fill me each day. This church here in Cowes is empty, much like every other church around the UK at the moment. But churches aren't always empty, are they? Churches should be full of people. Maybe you're somebody who goes along to church week in, week out, and you love going there. Or maybe you're somebody who gets dragged there by your parents, like I was when I was younger. Or maybe you're somebody who has never been to a church before. So this evening, we're going to be exploring a little bit about what church is, and more importantly, why it is crucial that we are part of the church. 
So I'm going to try and answer four questions this evening. And the first of those questions is, what was the church? The church that Jesus had in mind when he was here on earth was obviously a powerful church, and it was obviously a church that he loved. Jesus said to Peter, on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not stand against it. It's a powerful, powerful church. And secondly, it's something he loves. The church is described as the bride of Christ. Now, I have a bride, my wife, and I love her so, so much. Jesus loves his church. So the church must be an important thing to Jesus. Some of us look around church and we think about what we know about church and we think, well, that's not what Jesus had in mind, surely, because Jesus can't love this, can he? And this is a particularly powerful thing. Well, before I go on to the next question about what the church is, let's have a little look at what the church isn't. It's a difficult question to answer, actually, isn't it? What the church isn't, because uh, the church isn't a lot of things, obviously. The church isn't the Starship Enterprise. The church isn't a gorilla. The church isn't an ice cream. I could go on for a long time. So let's try and hone this down to some important things that the church isn't. The church isn't there for our entertainment. We may come to church expecting to be fed, like we go along to uh, the cinema, or we watch things on Netflix. We love to consume things and we love to be entertained, but the church isn't there to entertain us. And secondly, and really importantly, the church isn't perfect. As you know, this church is empty and you could say, well, this is brilliant. It's perfect now. And why is it perfect? Because it's not full of people. People like myself and like you, we're not perfect, are we? So the church, which is the people, is not perfect. So what is the church? Well, it's true that the church is a building, yes. But there's so much more to the church than that. The church, in its essence, in the, the biblical sense, is the people. And the Bible talks about the people of God being the church across the whole of the world, and across all of time. So we can talk about the church being every person who has ever trusted in Jesus as their saviour in the whole of time, in the whole of history. And that part of the church is often an easy part for us to feel like we belong to. Because once we accept Jesus as our saviour, we belong to the worldwide church. But and across is also the local church, the place where people come to worship and to meet together, sometimes to eat together and to hear teaching about God and to join together to do amazing things out in their community. That's the part that we often find it's difficult to commit to, don't we? But that is where the true beauty of the church is to be found. There was a, a famous uh, pastor as well who, who said, the local church is the hope for the world. Now that's a bold statement, but he was somebody who truly believed in the church. Now, what do you think the church is? Do you really think that the local church is the hope for the whole world? Some of us will be thinking, yes, I really believe the local church can be the hope for the whole world. But others of us are thinking, I know my church. I really don't think there's much hope there at all. Well, that leads us on to our final question. What will the church be? And actually, a lot of that comes down to, to you and it comes down to me. Because the church is the people, isn't it? You may be thinking, well, there's so much I want to change at my church. There are so many things that I don't like because they're maybe a bit old-fashioned or 
may be a little bit boring, or that they seem irrelevant to me. Well, you can only really change things if you are part of it, can't you? You can't stand on the sidelines or sit in the back pew and just moan about things. We need to be part of the church so that we can help shape the church into what the church is meant to be. If you don't go along to your church, then your church is missing you. They may not say, we really miss you. Some of them may, because they really care about you. But your church is missing you, because the church is made up of all of those different people of different ages, including people who are your sort of age and people who are a bit old like me. When we commit to a church, we're saying to the people that form that church, you are the people who God has put me with to live life and to um, make a difference in this world. Now it's a difficult time, isn't it, for us to tackle this chapter of committing to going to church because you can't go to church. But we can still commit to following our church online when they have an online service. But also the other thing isn't just committing to go along to church, it's committing to be involved. So I'd really encourage you, I challenge you to see how you can get involved even during this lockdown time, wherever your creativity takes you to. But this is part of being the local church, it's being involved. So whatever your gifts are, whoever God has made you to be, offer them to the church now and say, I have this gift can I use it for our local church and our local community? So that's the challenge for this week, to commit to church, to make it the priority in your life for the weeks to come. Who knows what amazing things could happen, the lives that could be transformed, the freedom that could be found just through you making that commitment to be part of the local church. Let's spend a bit of time thinking about that while we worship Jesus now. We're going to sing This I Believe.
Thanks for leading us in worship with that song there, Joe. It's time to go to our cabin clubs now. Uh, so sign into the Zoom meeting and uh, you'll be put in a waiting area where you'll be able to get assigned to your separate groups uh, soon. So we'll see you there.